All right, so in this video, I'm going to use Microsoft Excel to simulate a game of chance. Now, my game of chance is rolling a dice and spinning this spinner and then multiplying the dice number and the spinner number together. Now, Alice, Bob and Charlie are playing the game. Alice wins if the answer is a multiple of six. Bob wins if the with multiples of four, but they're not multiples of six. So, for instance, the number 12, Alice would win that, and Bob win, wouldn't because it's a multiple of four, but it's also a multiple of six. And Charlie wins everything else. So, let's get started with the simulation first, and then we'll worry about Alice, Bob, and Charlie in a minute. So, I'm going to open up Excel, and I'm going to put in a couple of headings here. Uh, I'm just going to do it in A4. This is cell A4, Trials. And I'm going to type in the number one and the number two. I'm going to do a hundred trials. So I'm going to highlight one and two. I'm going to stretch it down. Okay, that brings me to a hundred. Uh, just so you can see that again, highlight one and two. Click, click and hold on this little corner here, and drag it down. That's too many. Just going to go up to the number one hundred. Okay, that's the first thing. Now, my next two headings are going to be dice and spinner. And I'm going to get Excel to generate me a random number. Now, I'm going to use this thing. I'm going to type equals. That means I want a formula. Rand between. So type that all as one word, equals rand between. Open a bracket. And now I just need to tell it what I want my random numbers be to be between. Now for a dice, I want them between, to be between 1 and 6. Okay, and uh, for a spinner, now my spinner only had four numbers, so I'm going to ask for a random number between 1 and 4. Okay, I'm going to highlight both of those and then using this little bottom right hand corner, I'm going to drag them down as well like that. So now what I have is a hundred uh, randomly generated dice roll and spins. Um, now every time I change you can see those numbers are changing. Now you'll remember that my game says that we're multiplying the dice and the spinner together. So if I go over here I'll just call this a result and that's going to be equal to this cell times this cell. And I can drag that down. And these are all going to keep changing because that random number keeps changing. But you can see here are all my results here and that's how we're going to determine who won. So I'm going to create three more columns here and we're going to figure out whether each of them win and we're going to use an if statement to do that. Statements can be tricky but uh, we'll just follow along here. So the first one is multiples of six. So equals if. Now I'm going to use uh, more than one logical test here. So then it's a 6 or a 12 or an 18 or a 24. They're going to be the things that Alice wins with. So I'm going to write if or and then if that uh, equals 6 or that equals 12, or that equals 18, or that equals 24. And that's the end of my um, logical test. Now, if that's true, Alice is going to win. So I'm going to write the number 1, just for winning. And if, or she doesn't win, let's put the number 0. Okay, so you can see there was a 6, so Alice won. Just scroll down here and do all of them. Okay, you can see Alice lost there because it was an 8. Alice lost there because it was a 3. Alice won there because it was a 6. Okay, I can do the same for Bob. Equals if or. Now the things that win for Bob are this being equal to 4 or this being equal to 8 or not this being equal to 12 because those are Alice's wins 
so the next one would be this being equal to 16 or this being equal to 20 or um, I think the highest number can be 24 but that's Alice's win so we can't use that okay so there's all my little ors value if true, 1 if he wins, and 0 if he loses. Okay, we'll scroll down and see that if that's working. Okay, you can see that he's 1 there with a 4. So scroll down. Okay, um, now I'm going to do something tricky with Charlie here. I'm going to say equals if and this is equal to zero and this is equal to zero. Um, that means that if they're both equal to zero, that means that Alice and Bob both lost, which means Charlie must have won. That's my sneaky way of getting it done. Okay, we'll see if that's worked. Okay, it looks like it's working. Alice and Bob lost and Charlie won on a three. Bob won because it was a four. Alice won because it was a six. Okay, that's pretty good so far. We know now which one Alice and Bob are winning each time. Uh, now what I'm going to do is add them up. Equals the sum of all of Alice's numbers. That means Alice has won 35 games. Bob has won 29 games and Charlie has won 43 games. Um, you can see every time I, the reason I'm typing numbers in here is every time I do that, those numbers change, which creates a new 100 trials. Alice wins. Charlie wins, uh, Alice wins, Charlie wins, Alice and Bob tie, Alice wins, Charlie wins, Charlie wins. All right, so you can see this must be a pretty close game. I wonder how close it actually is. I really made myself a little two-way table here to just check. Um, it looks like Alice has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different ways of winning. It looks like Bob has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ways of winning. And it looks like Charlie has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ways of winning. So this game is better for Charlie. Um, Alice is second best and Bob, he looks like he has the worst chance. And if I just run a few more trials, you can see Charlie won there. Charlie won again. Oh, this time Alice won. So even though it's more favorable to Charlie, Alice got lucky here. Uh, Charlie won again. And Charlie won again. So it looks like it's favorable to Charlie here. Looks like my simulation is doing or is verifying what my two-way table would suggest. All right, that's a simulation.